All right, guys, today we are literally at the outlet of the St. John's River. Um, we got all the bells and whistles on today. We have the sonar, which is running off the wall battery. I'll explain that a little bit later in the video. We had the trim and tilt, totally functional, rolling real nice as far as being able to pull the engine out in shallow water. Um, I'll show you everything. Um, we're gonna test it, see what happens. I've never had it really out in open water in a sense of testing it. Um, just because I haven't had time. But bottom line is, this is just to be able to pull the engine out of the water in the shallows, not to trim the boat, okay? I'm just letting you all know this. So if it ever goes live where it's gonna be sold, it is not meant to trim the boat, okay? It is only to lift the engine in shallow so you don't hit the skag, hit the prop, etc. That's all it's about, right? Keep it simple. You'll see, again, the sonar is working off a 12-volt system. Actually, it's a 20-volt to 12-volt drop. Um, works fantastic got a five amp hour battery in there i'll show you the, the build it's up sitting up front there it's also my dry storage for things you know like you know my phone and all that good stuff but um totally rigged out everything's on the boat today um we'll get some numbers i'll show you everything in depth and we will go from there we're running a two horsepower 50 cc this is the one i beat on all the time so you'll see it kind of back there with a the trim system Right, this is the same one, same example, one that I always use. So, oops, sorry about that. And um, we'll see what we got. All right, guys, finally got it out to the sandbar. We're at uh, Huguenot Beach, which is kind of the mouth of the St. John's, the Atlantic's out there. We got a little sandbar that just pops up during, well, it's what's left of the uh, huge sandbar out here during high tide. So let me go over the build. Works like a champ. As always, um, here's the trim and tilt. It's not fully out of the water, but it actually allowed me to get right up on plane into the sand. Um, you'll see trim and tilt along with the uh, tiller extension and everything works as it should. This allows it to freely go up and down as it's turning and as it's rotating up. And all the wiring is kind of run down to both sides. You see it, I have a kind of D-link on the side over there that goes into the power block up here. This is always cool because it runs all my electronics. It runs all the DeWalt battery that drops to 20 volts. One switch, two wires out, shares the 20 volt, five amp hour battery. You can kind of see display still on. Works great. A little extra fuel, of course, anchor. All that stuff over here. I put the kill switch since I'm a left steerer. I always put the kill switch on that side. Pretty much it, nothing else to explain except the engine now. So we get a little close up on this. You'll see I have my sonar leg on the side, which is here. And that literally just bolts on. I don't usually bring that depending on where I'm at. If I know the water's really well, I just unscrew it and leave it off. You can see I'll have it run through a D-link on the side. Um, trim and tilt had to be customized on this bracket. You'll see it's really close to the edge. I had to kind of grind a little bit in here. But um, this floats, which allows the engine to turn while you're trimming. And, con and again, we got to be clear about this, that this is not meant to trim the boat's hull. It's meant to lift it out of the water. So as an example, you want to go higher, you can go higher. That's it. Now it stops. This is a two inch actuator. So it will lock out at a certain point. This takes, this took a little bit of an adjustment. I'm not going to lie to you where I had to go in here and kind of learn where it needs to be because you will break the mount if that if you in fact pull that too tight it'll break the mount there's no question about it don't want to stress it out and you certainly don't want a longer one down here again there's a little bit better look at the sonar leg here totally adjustable this does kick out if in fact you hit something but when i run works like a champ um all the wires have the waterproof connectors on them has sheets just in case i hit something you know with rods or whatever the case may be there's my dry bag Again, going up to the power block up here, which I have a strap on just in case. And Millennium Seats, saltwater edition. But this is it. So I'm going to go ahead and run this and get in some seriously shallow water. See what the speed is on it with the trim. Not that it shouldn't matter, but it's trimmed all the way down. So we'll see what we got on the pursuit. Just so you guys have a good understanding of what it does. If you kind of, I know you guys can't see it because I'm not that close. But this is your up gets to a certain point stops goes down i mean that's out of the water literally 
So let me go back to that real quick and I'll walk around so you guys can see it. Okay, so if you're gonna look at it now, you're literally almost at the bottom. Actually, you're higher than the bottom of the hull, at least on the new canoe. You may not be that on other boats, depending. Remember, that has to pivot, otherwise something will happen with this. I Meaning you don't wanna lock it out. You don't wanna crack it either because if it gets too tight, I mean, I think we'll pull, I think they set up to 220 pounds of torque and that's crazy. I don't know if I believe it, but I don't wanna try it. So there's your height. So if you look at it, that's a nice lift to get it out of the sand or, you know, if you're going in shallows. Let me swing the boat around and I'll bring it all the way down and show you what that collar does. There we go. Here's probably a better look here. Collar's going down. I'm sorry, collar's going up. Engine down, that's it. Since it's only two inches of throw, you know, you don't have to worry about it, you know, going too far. But I will tell you, I've seen it flex only because, you know, if you're not paying attention and you don't adjust it right, you know, it'll put some stress on that bracket. So you just got to be careful if you decide to use one. Um, don't know if I'll be able to market them for you guys. I think I can do the drawing and the plans for you and maybe just offer the kit parts. Um, the actuators are super difficult to get right now. Obviously, you know that because of what's going on in the US and of course around the world. So I will see how this performs. I hope everything kind of does what it's supposed to do. Um, works great so far. Still have the bull nose on, haven't taken that off. And I try to put the sheets on everything covers just because things get snagged on kayaks, especially with, you know, fishing poles and things of that nature. But uh, there you go. So we're gonna get some speed here. Water is real shallow, about three foot. So we'll see. The current's coming in, though it is ripping. Can't really tell this direction until we start going with the current. Right now we're about 5'1", five, 5'2". Five, hard to it's hard to tell when currents go opposite direction. We're going into the current or sideways actually. But uh, I'm gonna run under the bridge into the estuaries. I'm not going out there. I see a few more kayak fishermen in the shallows over here. But I'm gonna try the inside creek. Everything's working like a champ, no issues. But I will uh, get on the other side and open it up in the flat water. But right now we're doing like, you know, 4.2, 4.3. I mean, we're just kind of putting. And uh, we'll get top end on the other side. The trim doesn't make a difference on top end because remember, it's only for lifting and lowering the engine. That's if you're running real shallow, so at least you have a little bit of the ability to get it out of the way of the obstruction. All right, so we got 5.9 loaded down. So yeah, that's, that was a nice run. Definitely not in the mid to high fives. I probably would stick with the low fives. It's, it's nice, it's a cruise. You don't have to burn much gas. So you can see the sonar is working really nice. We're in about two foot of water, three foot of water. It's quite shallow here. And when you're running, it seems like when the lake kicks up, if you're doing like five plus miles an hour, the back leg kind of opens up a little bit, but um, which kind of throws the, uh, the depth off, but uh, it's pretty on point. I mean, this is some shallow water here. But uh, like I said, we got 5.9. I don't know if you guys can see that, 5.9, and uh, runs great. And I'm not trimming the motor, it's still where it's supposed to be. Again, just there to bring it up when you need it. I'm gonna go fish under the bridge here where it's cool. It's too damn hot right now. Well, this is your 
skiff. I mean, in a nutshell, power on a kayak is no different than a skiff. So all the purists hate us, but that's the way it goes. So top end now, we just got 6.2 out of it, but I'm sure that was on a thought between a current or something. Usually it's about 5.9 to 6.1. She's booking though. Super stable, great throttle, no complaints. Beautiful day, but it is hot. Right there, we're high, but we're actually like five right there. So you can really kick it down at least one click and still get high fours all day long. I mean, that's fours, man. That's awesome. Didn't take us long to get back here. Water's beautiful, though. It's not Miami color, but it's pretty nice up here.